Summer Bear, Life Balance Education, and Salt Lake Community College present the Mockingjay players in The Hunger Games Mockingjay Radio Drama. After the bombing of District 13, Katniss is unable to perform as the Mockingjay because she now realizes that everything she does and says results in the punishment of Peta. The rebels have decided to try to rescue him. Boggs and Gale volunteered for the dangerous rescue mission. I want to go to the Capitol. I want to be part of the rescue mission. They're gone, Cadmus. How long ago did they leave? I could catch up. I could just... It will never happen. You're too valuable and too vulnerable. There was talk of sending you to another district to divert the capital's attention while the rescue takes place. But no one felt you could handle it. Please, Hamish. I have to do something. I can't just sit here waiting to hear if they died. There must be something I can do. All right. Let me talk to Plutarch. Finnick, wake up. Did you hear? They're going to rescue Annie and Peta. I just can't stand waiting. Katniss, this will decide things one way or the other. By the end of the day, they'll either be dead or with us. It's, it's more than we could hope for. Did you love Annie right away, Finnick? No. She crept up on me. All right, I have a job for you two. If you think you can pull yourselves together, we still need the footage of the bombing of 13. And if we can get in the next few hours, BT can air it leading up to the rescue and maybe keep the capital's attention elsewhere. Yes, a distraction. What we really need is something so riveting that even President Snow won't be able to tear himself away. You two got anything like that? We will keep Snow's attention, won't we, Katniss? You bet we will. All right, get dressed and ready. Cressida is waiting for you. Katniss, how did you meet Peta? When I met Peta, I was 11 years old, and I was almost dead. My father died in a mine explosion, and my family was slowly starving to death, and I was ready to give up. I was sitting in the rain, ready to die, when he was told to give some burnt bread to the pigs. Hey. Here, take it. Quickly. He gave me the bread instead of the pigs. That bread saved not only my life, but also my sister Prim's. The next day I saw the mark on his face where his mother had hit him for burning the bread. I think he deliberately burnt the bread so that he could help me. After that, we never even spoke. The first time I ever talked to Pito was on the train to the games. But he was already in love with you. I guess so. How are you doing with the separation? Not well. I know at any moment Snow could kill him especially since he warned 13 about the bombing. It's a terrible thing to live with. But because of what they're putting him through, I don't have any reservations anymore about doing whatever it takes to destroy the Capitol. I'm finally free. President Snow once admitted to me that the Capitol was fragile. And at the time, I didn't know what he meant. It was hard to see clearly because I was so afraid. But now, I'm not. The capital's fragile because it depends on the districts for everything. Food, energy, even the peacekeepers that police us. If we declare our freedom, the capital collapses. President Snow, thanks to you, I'm officially declaring mine today. Cut! That was good, Katniss. Finnick, Hamish, will you come over here for a minute? That personal message to Snow has me thinking. What if we told the people what happens to the victors of the games? Plutarch, is that necessary? Yes, I think that will work. Finnick, you don't have to do this. If it will help Annie, I do. I'm ready. Action. Finnick, do you have anything to tell the people? President Snow used to sell me. My body, that is. I wasn't the only one. If a victor is considered desirable, the president gives them as a reward or allows people to buy them for an exorbitant amount of money. If you refuse, he kills someone you love. So you do it. I wasn't the only one, but I was the most popular. And perhaps the most defenseless, because the people I loved were so defenseless. To make themselves feel better, my patrons would make presents of money or jewelry. 
but I found a much more valuable form of payment. Secrets. And this is where you're going to want to stay tuned, President Snow. Because so many of them were about you, Coriolanus Snow. Such a young man when he rose to power. Such a clever one to keep it. How, you must ask yourself, did he do it? One word. That's all you really need to know. Poison. Take the case of Lavinia. She was running against snow and she mysteriously died. They say it was from bad shellfish. Take the case of Decimus. They say he died of elusive viruses. When his bill that was not to Snow's liking was about to be passed, they say Marcus died from an overlooked weakness in the aorta. Let's look at Titus, one of Snow's allies. They say he died from a rare kidney disease. But what people don't know is that he was romantically interested in the same woman as Snow. Now, Coriolanus Snow is a smart man. He was often seen drinking from the same cup himself, lest anyone suspect him of poisoning it. But the funny thing is, is that the antidotes don't always work. They say why he wears roses that reek of perfume. They say it's to cover the scent of blood from mouth sores that will never heal. They say that Snow has a list. They say no one knows who is on this list or who will be the next to die. Maybe if you cross him, you will be the next on his list. They say, they say. We've got to get this edited and to BT. The capital will be captivated. Finnick, would you come with me? Tell me more of those secrets, and let's see if there's anything we can use. Is that what happened to you, Hamish? No. My mother, younger brother, and my girl. They were all dead two weeks after I was crowned victor. Because I used the force field, Snow wasn't happy with me and saw it as defiance of the capital. Using the force field to win. Something that was never intended to be part of the games. Snow had no one to use against me. I'm surprised he didn't just kill you. Oh no. I was the example, Cadness. The person to hold up to the young Phoenix and Joannas and Cashmere's. What could happen to a victor who caused problems? But he had no leverage against me. Until Peta and I came along. They're back. We're wanted in the hospital. Did they... Annie? All I know is they're back. Let's go and see who's here. <laughs> Finnick! Annie! Annie, you're here. I've missed you. We got them all out except Inobaria. But since she's from two, we doubt she's being held anyway. Pete is at the end of the hall. The effects of the gas are just wearing off. You should be there when he wakes. Pita is here? Yes. Pete! Uh, uh, Pita! Get him off of her! Just tried to kill Cadmus? What did the capital do to him? Katniss, hold still. We need to make sure there's no permanent damage in the spinal cord or airway. I think they'll take the collar off soon. Hi, Prim. Would you leave us alone for one second? No, if you force me to leave, I'll go directly to surgery and tell my mother everything that's happened. And I warn you, she doesn't think much of a game maker calling the shots on Katniss's life, especially when you've taken such poor care of her. <laughs> I'd let it go, Plutarch. So, Katniss, Peter's condition has come as a shock to all of us. We couldn't help but notice his deterioration in the last two interviews. Obviously, he had been abused, but we put his psychological state down to that. Now we believe something more was going on, that the capitalists subjected him to a rather uncommon technique known as hijacking. Beatty, would you please explain? I'm sorry, but I can't tell you all the specifics of it, Katniss. The capital's very secretive about this form of torture, and I believe the results are inconsistent. This much we do know. It's a type of fear conditioning. The term hijack comes from an old English word that means to capture, or even better, seize. We believe it was chosen because the technique involves the use of tracker jacker venom and the jack suggesting hijack. Okay. You were stung in your first Hunger Games, so unlike most of us, you have first-hand knowledge of the effects of the venom. 
I do. Terror, hallucinations, and nightmarish visions of losing those I love. I'm sure you remember how frightening it was. Did you also suffer mental confusion in the aftermath? Did you have a hard time judging what was true and what was false? Most people who have been stung and live to tell about it report something of the kind. Yes, the encounter with PETA. Was not sure if he had saved my life by taking on Kato. Recall is made more difficult because memories can be changed. Brought to the forefront of your mind, altered and saved again in a revised form. Now imagine that I asked you to remember something either with a verbal suggestion or by making you watch a tape of the event. And while that experience is refreshed, I give you a dose of the Tracker Jacker Venom. Not enough to induce a three-day blackout, just enough to infuse a memory with fear and doubt. And that's what your brain puts in long-term storage. Is that what they've done to PETA? Taken his memories of Katniss and distorted them so they're scary? So scary that he'd see her as life-threatening. That he might try to kill her. Yes, that's our current theory. <laughs> it isn't possible for someone to make PETA forget he loves me. No one could do that. But you can reverse it, right? Um, there's very little data on that. Not really. If hijacking rehabilitation had been attempted before, we have no access to those records. Well, you're going to try, aren't you? You're not just going to lock him up in a padded room and leave him to suffer. Of course we'll try, Prim. It's just that we don't know to what degree we'll succeed, if any. My guess is that fearful events are the hardest to root out. They're the ones that we naturally remember the best, after all. And apart from his memories of Katniss, we don't know what else had been tampered with. We're putting together a team of mental health and military professionals to come up with a counterattack. I personally feel optimistic he'll make a full recovery. Do you? And what do you think, Hamish? I think PETA might get somewhat better, but I don't think he'll ever be the same. At least he's alive. Snow's executed PETA's stylist and prep team on live television tonight. We have no idea what happened to Effie Trinket. PETA's damaged, but he's here, with us. And that's a definite improvement over his situation 12 hours ago. Let's keep that in mind, all right? Katniss, I know this whole thing with PETA is terrible for you, but remember, Snow worked on him for weeks. There's a chance that the old PETA, the one who loves you, is still inside, trying to get back to you. Don't give up on him. What are these? Ah, Katniss, you found us. Is this a secret? Uh, not really, but I felt a little guilty about stealing Gail away from you so much. I hope you've been putting his time to good use. Come and see. Beatty's been taking the fundamental idea behind my traps and adapting them into weapons. Bombs, mostly. It's really less about the mechanics of the traps than the psychology behind them. We'll be trapping an area that provides something essential to survival, water or food supply. Frightening prey so that a large number flee into a greater destruction. Endangering the offspring to draw in the actual desired target, the parent. Or, or luring the victim into what appears to be a safe haven, where death awaits it. And we are working with human impulses. Like compassion, a bomb explodes. Time is allowed for people to rush to the aid of the wounded. Then a second more powerful bomb kills them all. That seems to be crossing some kind of line. So anything goes? I guess there isn't a rule book for what might be unacceptable to do to another human being. Sure there is. BD and I have been following the same rule book President Snow used when he hijacked PETA. Katniss, we need you back up at the hospital. What for? They're going to try something on PETA. Send in the most innocuous person from 12 they can come up with. Find someone PETA might share childhood memories with, but nothing too close to you. They're screening people now. Katniss! Hey, Deli. How are you doing? Oh, it's been a lot of changes all at once. But everyone's really nice here in 13, don't you think? They've made an effort to make us feel welcome. Are you the one they've picked to see PETA? I guess so. Poor PETA. Poor you. I'll never understand the capital. Better not to, maybe. <laughs> Deli's known PETA for a long time. Oh, yes. We played together when we were little. 
I used to tell people he was my brother. What do you think? Anything that might trigger memories of you? We were all in the same class, but we never overlapped much. Katniss was always so amazing. I never dreamed she would notice me. The way she could hunt and go into the hob and everything. Everyone admired her so much. Deli always thinks the best of everyone. I don't think Peta could have bad memories associated with her. Well then, Deli, we'll give this a shot. Peta? It's Deli from home. Deli? <laughs> Deli, is it you? Yes! How do you feel? Awful. Where are we? What's happened? Here we go. I told her to steer clear of any mention of Katniss or the Capitol. Let's just see how much of home she can conjure up. Well, we're in District 13. We live here now. That's what those people have been saying, but it doesn't make any sense. Why aren't we home? There was an accident. I miss home badly, too. I was just thinking about those chalk drawings we used to do on the pavement stones. Yours were so wonderful. Remember, you would make one, each one a different animal. Yeah, pigs and cats and things. You said about an accident? It was bad. No one could stay. Hang in there, girl. But I know you're going to like it here, Peta. The people have all been really nice to us. There's always food and clean clothes, and school's much more interesting. Why hasn't my family come to see me? They can't. A lot of people didn't get out of 12. So we'll need to make a new life here. I'm sure they could use a good baker. Do you remember when your father used to let us make dough boys and girls? There was a fire. Yes. 12 burned down, didn't it? Because of her. Because of Katniss. Oh, no, Peta, it wasn't her fault. Did she tell you that? Get her out of there. She didn't have to. I was... Because she's lying. She's a liar. You can't believe anything she says. She's some kind of mutt that Capital created to use against the rest of us. No, Peta, she's not a mutt. Don't trust her, Deli. I didn't. She tried to kill me. She killed my friends, my family. Don't even go near her. She's a mutt. A mutt. She's a stinking mutt. He not only hates me, he doesn't even think I'm human. I can't stay here anymore. If you want me to be the Mockingjay, you'll have to send me away. Well, where do you want to go? The capital. Oh, can't do it. Not until all the districts are secure. Good news is, the fighting's almost over in all of them. But two. It's a tough nut to crack, though. Fine. Send me to two. Any chance we'll get to keep any of these geese? Yeah, most of them go to the camp kitchen, but they expect me to give a couple to whomever I'm staying with tonight for keeping me. Isn't the honor of the thing enough? You'd think, but word's gotten out that mocking jays are hazardous to your health. I saw Peter yesterday, through the glass. What'd you think? Something, something selfish. That you don't have to be jealous of him anymore? No, just the opposite. I thought, I'll never be able to compete with that. No matter how much pain I'm in, I don't stand a chance if he doesn't get better. You would never be able to let him go. You'd always feel wrong about being with me. The way I always felt wrong about kissing him because of you? If that's true, I could almost live with the rest of it. It's true. But so is what you said about Peta. We are here to see if we can come up with a plan to crack the nut, the holdout for the Capitol and their Air Force. It is a strictly military-oriented underground complex. It has interior fortifications, and we have attempted to seize it a number of times and have not succeeded. And the next person who suggests we take the entrances better have a brilliant way to do it because you're going to be the one leading that mission. Is it really necessary to take the nut? Or would it be enough just to disable it? That would be a step in the right direction. What do you have in mind? Think of it as a wild dog den. You're not going to fight your way in. So you have two choices. 
trap the dogs inside or, or flush them out. We've tried bombing the entrances. They're set too far inside the stone for any real damage to be done. I wasn't thinking of that. I was thinking of using the mountain. See? Look at the rock running down the sides. Oh, I see. The avalanche paths. It'd be tricky. We'd have to design a detonation sequence with great care. And once in motion, we couldn't hope to control it. We don't need to control it. If we can give up the idea that we have to possess the nut. Only shut it down. So, you're suggesting we start avalanches and block the entrances? That's it. Trap the enemy inside. Cut them off from supplies. Make it impossible for them to send out their hovercraft. You risk killing everyone inside. Look at the ventilation system. It's rudimentary at best. Nothing like what we have in 13. It depends entirely on pumping in air from the mountainsides. Block those vents, and you'll suffocate whoever's trapped. They could still escape through the train tunnel to the square. Not if we blow it up. The majority of the workers are citizens from two. So what? We'll never be able to trust them again. They should at least have a chance to surrender. Well, that's a luxury we weren't given when they firebombed 12. We watched children burn to death. And there was nothing we could do. Gale, the nuts and old mine, it'd be like causing a massive coal mining accident. But not so quick as the one that killed our fathers. Is this our problem? That our enemies might have a few hours to reflect on the fact they're dying? Instead of being blown to bits! You don't know how those District 2 people ended up in the nut. They may have been coerced. They may be held against their will. Some are our own spies. Will you kill them too? I would sacrifice a few, yes. To take the rest of them. And if I were a spy, I would say... Bring on the avalanches. You said we had two choices, to trap them or to flush them out. I say we try to avalanche the mountain, but leave the train tunnel alone. People can escape into the square, where we'll be waiting for them. Heavily armed, I hope. They sure will be. Heavily armed, we'll take them prisoner. Let's bring 13 into the loop now. Let President Coyne weigh in. She'll want to block the tunnel. Yes, most likely. But you know, Peter did have a point in his propose about the dangers of killing ourselves off. I've been playing with some numbers, factoring in the casualties and the wounded, and I think it's at least worth a conversation. Are you, are you coming to the tree where I told you to run so we'd both be free? That clip is not aired. How do you know it? My father told me that the birds stopped to listen when Mr. Everdeen sang. When I was six or seven, I heard him sing that song. And I wanted to see if it was true. And then what happened? The birds stopped and listened. Katniss, we didn't bomb the train tunnel, you know. Some of them will probably get out. And then we'll shoot them when they show their faces? Only if we have to. We could send in trains ourselves. Help evacuate the wounded. No. It was decided to leave the tunnel in their hands. That way, they can use all the tracks to bring people out. Besides, it will give us time to get the rest of our soldiers to the square. Katniss! I'm still here. There was an interesting turn of events with PETA this afternoon. He recognized the Hanging Tree song. He couldn't. He's never heard me sing it. Not you. Your father was singing it. It was the first connection to you that hasn't triggered some mental meltdown. Oh. It's something at least. It doesn't feel like much to me. Cadness, I know you're not gonna like this, 
but we need you to make a speech. A speech? I'll feed it to you line by line. You'll just have to repeat what I say. Look, there's no sign of life from that mountain. We've won, but the fighting's continuing. So we thought if we went out on the steps of the Justice Building and laid it out, told everybody that the Nuts defeated, that the Capitol's presence in District 2 is finished, you might be able to get the rest of their forces to surrender. I can't even see their forces. You'll be broadcast, both your voice through their emergency audio system and your image wherever people have access to a screen. You could save a lot of lives, Katniss. All right, I'll give it a try. Let's make this quick, you're too exposed. People of District 2, this is Katniss Everdeen speaking to you from the steps of your justice building, where... Give me one reason why I shouldn't shoot you. I can't. That's the problem, isn't it? We blew up your mine. You burned my district to the ground. We've got every reason to kill each other, so do it. Make the capital happy. I'm done killing their slaves for them. I'm not their slave. I am. That's why I killed Cato. And he killed Thresh. And he killed Clove. And she tried to kill me. It just goes around and around. And who wins? Not us. Not the districts. Always the capital. But I'm tired of being a piece in their games. When I saw that mountain fall tonight, I thought, huh, they've done it again. Caught me to kill you, the people in the districts. But why did I do it? District 12 and 2 have no fight except the one the capital gave us. And why are you fighting with the rebels on the rooftops? With Lime, who was your victor? With the people who are our neighbors, maybe even your family? I don't know. And you, up there on the roofs? I come from a mining town. Since when do miners condemn other miners to that kind of death? And then stand by to kill whoever manages to crawl out from the rubble? Who is the enemy? These people are not your enemy. The rebels are not your enemy. We all have one enemy. And it's the capital. This is our chance to put an end to their power. But we need every district to do it. Please, join us. Katniss! Katniss has just been shot. Will she live to continue to be the Mockingjay? Find out next time in part five of the Hunger Games Mockingjay radio drama. Until then... May the odds be ever in your favor. 